<laughs> my bad. Oh. Oh, okay, 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 okay. Hold up, my bad. Right, 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 right. <laughs> Dang. Dick is in the house. Dick is in the house. Okay, 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 okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that is my right. bad. Right, 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 right. Let me see if I can. It'll probably start where, where it left off at. Yeah, probably start where we left off at, I guess. No, it won't. Quite a lot of people in college. 
you know, it's because, first of all, let me say this here before I go any further, okay? I identify with that, okay? And I identify with that very, very, very much well because I've been incarcerated, uh, you know what I'm saying? And, 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 and uh, I'm sure Andrew Snub Snub Seven could speak on could speak on that note for himself, you know. But uh, <clears throat> of course, like a lot of us, especially a lot of us who are dark skinned descendants of slaves born here in America, who are overly mass incarcerated indiscriminately as well throughout this country. But however, that does not change the fact, still, you know, that. Uh, and I and I also have relatives that is incarcerated too, you know. So uh, I'm not I'm not uh you know like I said I'm not docile to how racist and how you know uh, corrupt mass incarceration is and what comes along with being in the penal system and which is connected as well with the so called criminal justice system in this country, okay, that definitely is a trivial to racism and, and, and very, very, very pertinent in its racist practices, discriminatory practices, and corrupt practices, okay, especially when it comes to that situation affecting the lives of human beings in this society, okay, but I must also say that, uh, you know, at the same time, once again, moving along to this point of my topic is that uh, people should, some people in some cases should be incarcerated. I mean, if you think about some of the crimes, the hideous crimes that are committed in this country, like sex trafficking, child uh, sexual pornography, child molestation. You know, stuff like my uh, so-called ex-leader of the Nubian Nation, Dr. Malakazi York, is uh, locked up for, which he is doing 135 years for in the federal system, you know. Um, and some of these people just don't need to be uh, given a chance. And in fact, it's because some of them cannot simply be reformed, especially from that type of behavior. It got to take a special situation. And I'm not talking about religion, far as a miracle or none of that crap. I'm just talking about it takes a very unique type of reformation tactic to reform someone from such behavior. And then you got people out here, you know what I'm saying, that's terrorizing our communities, and in particularly those of us that are dark skinned, the sins of slaves, you know, who's running rapid, terrorizing our communities with these drugs, gang banging, uh, you know, killing each other, killing anybody they see on site, especially if they think they are uh, snitching on them or whatever they want to call that, because people got that twisted too which that's another topic in itself, which could wait <laughs> for at a later time or whatever, but uh, you know what I'm saying? Or, you know, they run around here, you know what I'm saying? Actually, you know what I'm saying? Uh, intimidating people, you know, just because they're criminals in the street and they're being allowed to run amok and rap it. And, you know, and it's pretty much, you know, when people talk about the law, shooting down particularly those of us that are dark skinned the sense of slaves born here in America and murdering us because they see a nigger. You know what I'm saying? Um I must say that a lot of times we got to also analyze that some of our people actually put themselves in that situation for that to happen to them. Okay? And we cannot simply just ignore that, you know, although I know some will choose to do so for whatever reason, but we simply cannot ignore that. And 
also um uh, we cannot uh ignore the fact that um a lot of our people who go to prison and end up getting out maybe four or five or six different times you know what i'm saying and show clearly that they're never willing to change but keep on being a burden in society and a burden on the community and even as far as the family or whatever the case go you know what i'm saying and, and they just constantly are a problem and you know they and it's affecting the community as a whole you know what i'm saying like i mentioned when it comes to crimes like drugs or uh, uh, drug dealing or uh, you know um and even in some cases with our people when it comes to drug addiction you know because and i'm not gonna sit up here and, and say that all people on drugs need to be incarcerated i don't agree with that okay because i can identify with that too but however if they're constantly on drugs and they're not willing to change or get away from those behaviors such as drug addiction, alcohol addiction, which uh, will connect them eventually to being involved in criminal element activities. Then, hey, what what other what other solution is it other than than, than to keep them incarcerated in the institution because they're no good to themselves and they're no good for no one else. And that goes for the drug dealer, that goes for the gang banger, that goes for these gang, street gang leaders, that goes for, uh, and that goes for even those who's in those prison gangs that end up getting back out into society or find a loophole or because of the kind of shorter sentence they got and they end up back out on the street somehow in further corrupting the community. And if you notice, you see a lot of our brothers and so even, even soul sisters walking around with their pants hanging down, which we already know is something that originated in the prison system, okay? And they're bringing, they're furthermore so bringing that out here along with other uh, behaviors that they learned while they were in the system and this influence in the community. This is why the community is really not a community no more at least one of the reasons why this is the reason why you know what i'm saying uh you know you can't even walk out the street walk out in the streets and, and even glance at somebody unless you ready to get into some physical altercation or re or get a gun pulled on you you know what i'm saying because somebody don't like why you stand at them or some other senseless stuff like why you looking at them or whatever the case is or even glancing at them you know what i'm saying and i'm pretty su sure some of you who listen to hip-hop or so-called rap music have heard some rappers say certain things about that when it comes to you can't even blink because you're gonna get popped or whatever you see what i'm saying you 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 know and that's 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 a true reality in our society and even when I grew up in the 70s as a younger child, I didn't even see stuff like that going on. Not even in the early part of the 80s, you know what I'm saying, before the rap culture took over our community as well, which also contributes to the destruction that still goes on in our communities. And those of you that are that like rap music or that listen to rap music or that's even in the rap music industry, you know what I'm saying? You could agree or you could disagree, but the receipts is there to prove it. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and uh, you know, it's like, uh, I have to say that, uh, you know, at the end of the day, that, um, you know, um, we find ourselves in a situation right now where we are like, it's like we're in prison within our own community within our own homes and you know what the truth of the matter is i have to tell you yeah we got a lot of other issues to deal with as indigenous black americans even when it comes to the races but we are in prison within our own community
communities amongst each other because of the fact that we can't even get along. And this is not even in the institution where we're stuck behind a barbed wire fence and can't go nowhere. This is on this side of the barbed wire fence where we actually feel imprisoned in our own communities. And because of the criminal element that is taken over many of our communities or wherever black people, especially in lower income areas, live amongst each other, you know, that is a fact. And some people will even use the fact as use that as an excuse to say, well, yeah, because it's a low income area. What do you expect? But I have to once again on the disagreement aspect of things, I have to disagree with that because I've been to many communities throughout the country and there are some communities in the, around the country that are very, very poor and low income, but don't put up with the chaos of mess, okay, that goes on in certain other communities around the country that's considered low income okay so that's not no excuse you could go to other countries around the world and i know that for a fact you know what i'm saying you could go to any country certain countries around the world even in asia you know what i'm saying or the middle east which is considered third world or whatever or even in africa you know what I'm saying? And, and, and you could go in some of the poorest, poorest, poorest ghettos that you could find on the place of the earth. But they live happily. You hear about less violence. You hear more family structure as, as far as being tight knitly as communities go. You know what I'm saying? People are more happy even though they don't have much. You know what I'm saying? So you don't hear about the type of violence in those communities like you do in a lot of poor income communities here in the United States. So I have to say that's not an excuse for people to run around acting like, you know, they, they in some safari jungle somewhere. You know what I'm saying? A wildlife jungle somewhere. You know what I'm saying? Like they ain't got no head on their shoulders, period. <laughs> it was, some would say like a chicken with their head cut off, you know? So I, I have to debunk that excuse when when you, when people bring that. You see what I'm saying? Because that's, uh, you know, and we, we use a lot of excuses. Oh, we, we ain't got no jobs. We'll create you a job. And I ain't talking about no illegal job either. Create a legitimate job. You know, and that's the problem with black people in this country. They are not used to being creative when it comes to being legit, when it comes to making money legitimately most of the time. You know what I'm saying? So, and, 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 it's, and, and you know, you, we can't really blame that on nobody but ourselves because of the opportunities and resources we have to create legitimate jobs for ourselves. As a matter of fact, I'm going to give you a prime example. Back in the 60s, when uh, black, black gangster disciple uh, leader Jeff Ford and his organization was given millions uh, by the federal government for the city of Chicago, they gave that money straight to them to help create jobs and stuff for them. And you know what they did with that money? They took it and bought guns with it and all kind of stuff. You see what I'm saying? And this is why they ended up becoming more of a worse criminal organization. And many of them, like they leader Jeff Ford, ended up nowhere but in prison or dead. You see what I'm saying? And to this very, so, and, and then they had to stop funding them because they saw that that money was going straight, strictly to illegal activity when it was supposed to have been empowering the black community, as people say, in Chicago at that time. You see what I'm saying? So, you know, it's no excuse. It's no excuse. And they should have, they 
who's going to give that money to anybody. They should have gave that money to the to, 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 to people that would have been considered more uh, capable of doing something more constructive with that money. As far as when you want to talk about black economic empowerment, we have we had quite a bit of opportunities before this present time to be economically empowered. But that money went into the wrong hands. Just like in a case like when brothers be talking about all the millions that went in the hands of Louis Farrakhan during the Million Man March and these other marches he's been having since, you know? And it went nowhere but through his hands and ain't got nothing to show for it. So you wanna what you wanna know why we're not economically in a position that we should be in? That we even uh, you know in poverty and all this other stuff in our community is because it goes into the corrupt hands of people. So again, that's not you know what I'm saying. No excuse. Especially when you're selling poison to kill your own people. And you know it's killing your own people. Especially when you know it's done even you the same way as someone in your family or close to you the same way. But you steady dishing it out to other people that look like you and don't give a damn. So, and, and even if you have went to prison a lot of times for the same crime and still ain't reformed yourself and still continue doing the same thing. I see no other recourse but for a person like that to stay incarcerated. Even if 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 if, if uh, the system got to throw the book at them, as they say, you see what I'm saying? And I I know a lot of people that's listening. Like I said, it's going to totally very disagree with that. And hey, that's your choice. But I'm I'm a, I'm gonna put the truth out there like it is. And I don't care what nobody say. Matter of fact, I die for this. Okay, I'm gonna make it clear. I die for speaking this truth. But just because you silence me, don't mean ain't no one else gonna put the same truth out there. So there you go. You can't. You can kill the individual, as someone would say, but you can't kill the message. Okay. With, and with that said, you know, um, you know. Uh, I just, I just have to say that, uh, you know, uh, that there are some people that deserve to be incarcerated. Okay. You know, and, and, and I want to just share something because I don't really talk too much about, uh, family or so-called relatives on these live, uh, podcasts or whatever, you know, but I must say that I have a uh, paternal one that I'm related to that's doing time in his 70s because he was not truly trying to reform himself, okay? And as a result, he's doing, uh, uh, he, he's serving a sentence where he might as well at his age be doing life anyway, okay? And it was because of the choices that he made. And, you know, I don't even care what he says now, you know? And plus, why he was doing what he was doing as far as helping to destroy other people's lives, he had the knowledge of knowing that that same thing was destroying his life at one time or another but chose to use that to destroy other people's lives because of his greed and selfishness. And he was not a complete docile individual. It was certain levels of intelligence that he had when he was on the street to the point where he knew what he was doing. And he just like, he's like some of the most of them brothers who go to prison and turn to religion or whatever, but you know, that don't deter me from seeing him as the person he's always been. And matter of fact, since he's been incarcerated, 
he's tried to use other relatives, including myself, to do his bidding when it comes to uh, crime, okay? And that's another reason why I had to cut him off, okay? Because when it gets to the point where you're, in, where you're incarcerated and you're trying to get other people to do your bidding from the streets and you don't care about the fact that you're jeopardizing their freedom, too, then that shows me even why you're behind bars or behind a barbed wire fence that you ain't really reformed as you even claim. And those letters you you you've written from prison, or 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 the collect calls that you have made from prison, you know what I'm saying? And, and he's not the only one that does that. There's plenty of them that does that. Okay, there's plenty of them that does that. And that's another thing that I saw even during the time I was incarcerated. You know, just like Tupac said. A lot of, a lot of, a lot of, a lot of cats, a lot of people in prison ain't nothing but a bunch of promise makers. And that was one true statement that the late Tupac Shakur made. And it's definitely a fact that still stands on firm ground today, even after his death. May the dead rest in peace, mm -hmm. you know? Because, uh, you know, it's like, uh, you know what I'm saying? You, 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 you know, you can't really be trusted. Now, you have a very few people like uh, your Malcolm X. What's that brother that was in that TV show uh, that played in that TV show called Boston something? Uh, years, a couple of decades ago. But well, anyway, he was a soul brother. Mm -hmm. And he played on this national uh, sitcom. He became a very popular actor on that national sitcom. And uh, he was a, a formerly incarcerated individual, but he changed his life around like Malcolm X did mm -hmm. and never went back. Okay? Matter of fact, I think he just died over recently ago, if I'm not mistaken. But I have to be checking to that whenever or whatever. But he never went back. And it's many, it's quite a few people like them two individuals I just mentioned. From among us is dark skin, the sense of slaves born in America that never went back to prison. Mm -hmm. But it's far few and many in that case too. I just want to point that out. You know what I'm saying? And, and uh, you know, uh, and, and you got those unfortunately because I, I don't like this. And I have to bring this up because it's a fact as well. But you got some of those, unfortunately, too. You know what I'm saying? Who get out in and out of jail or prison or are on their way to jail or prison. And they see people like a Malcolm X or, uh, you know what I'm saying? Like a, 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 I, 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 a what's his name? Ivan Iverson, who didn't go back to prison either. You know what I'm saying? You know, uh, or certain other people, like from among us, who got out and rehabilitated themselves and never went back to that type of life or lifestyle mm -hmm. that got them in that position. You see what I'm saying? And so you have a lot of people that's jealous of, the, of them type of soul brothers and sisters. Of course, even like myself. You see what I'm saying? You have a lot of people jealous. You know what I'm saying? And, and it ain't just got to be because we got a lot of material, whatever, to make people jealous. They just jealous because they don't want to see you get no farther than them. Because they still in the slump. They, and they want to stay in that slump. Like crabs in a bucket. And they don't tend on trying to get up out of there. Or get, or, or to get themselves about that lifestyle that constantly keeps them uh, entering into those incarcerated revolving doors. You see what I'm saying? So, 
what they do is they try to do anything they can to bring that next person down that they see is trying to rise up out of that type of situation. You see what I'm saying? And that's the reason why I honestly, it's not about saying I'm better than anybody and it's not period about being someone else being better than somebody else. But the fact of the matter is I can't associate with them type of people, period. And I don't. You know what I'm saying? And that's just it. It is what it is. You know what I'm saying? Because you're not going to get me out there and try to drag me down with you. I'm not going to let it happen. You know what I'm saying? And if that means I got to die before I let that happen, then so be it too. You know what I'm saying? But I'm not, I'm not, I'm not finna let that happen. Not any, under any circumstances. And anyone that's truly trying to reform themselves shouldn't let nothing like that happen to them. You know what I'm saying? Because we have a lot of vultures in our community or among us as far as the sins of slaves born in America. You know, that, that, that don't care about no one else but themselves, especially when they out here committing crimes and, and, and terrorizing their own people. Even like these organizations like the Nation of Islam, the Moor Science Temple. Yep, yep, I'm, I'm putting y'all on blast. You know what I'm saying? Because you're selling poison also to our people. And when people like Malcolm X is trying to clean clean, clean house, when he saw stuff like that, y'all killed him, okay? Yeah. So, yeah, I'm putting that on notice, too. You know what I'm saying? And, and I'm going to tell you something. You know, um, <clears throat> you even got a lot of these so-called Christian preachers, a reverend, pork chop, Baptist preachers, whether they female or male, that's in our community doing the same thing far as helping to facilitate the drug epidemic that's still destroying us as dark-skinned indigenous black Americans, okay? And I don't care, I don't care where they're at in any part of this country. They exist in many communities as well as communities that is more populated by indigenous black Americans as well. You know what I'm saying? And they need to be put on blast and exposed and held accountable for what they're doing. Especially when they come in, in the so-called name of so-called religion doing it. We're not going to just talk about those that's just coming strictly from the streets doing it. We're talking about those that's using religion as a platform to do this. Okay? You know, and, and, and uh, it's even been it's even been said to me years ago, more than once, that Louis Farrakhan had his hand in the drug trade in Chicago. I can't prove that, but it's been said. We know his son, uh, Joshua Farrakhan, was addicted to crack cocaine, and he got as a result he even got shot. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, you know, um, <clears throat> we have to definitely, uh, you know, uh, we definitely have to be very aware when we're in this uh, situation amongst each other. And don't sit up and tell me, and I'm not going to let you tell me, that it's because the Caucasian or the white man got his influence. Well, nope, nope, nope. Like they put the crack cocaine and the heroin in our community in the 70s and 80s and it was our choice not to pick it up. Just like it's still our choice today not to pick it up. Not to pick up that AK. Not to pick up that 9mm. Not to pick up that 45 caliber pistol. You see what I'm saying? Not to pick up them other high-tech pistols or high caliber pistols that you can even use during uh, war combat overseas somewhere. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. 
Okay, so that's not you. You you know what I'm saying? That's not a uh, you 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 know. I don't I don't need to hear that. You know what I'm saying? It's a lot of things we could have combated a long time ago with ease if we'd have simply not picked it up. Okay, because it did it didn't levitate off the table. I used to believe it was a such thing as levitation, but of course. <laughs> as time moved on, I found out that was a bunch of bull crap. So nothing never never states. I'm sitting right in front of my coffee table. And I see something on my table. I know it ain't gonna levitate. Cause the only way it's gonna come off that table if I pick it up with my bare five finger hand. You see what I'm saying? So people could definitely miss me with that. That it was the white man that caused this, no, no, no. We had choices to deal with this, to navigate around this, which would have made our communities more of a safe place as well as a safe haven for us to live in. This is the reason why the Mississippi campaign is so important. The Operation Exodus Mississippi campaign is so important because if we could definitely get that off the ground, we could eliminate that type of situation. And like someone said, that's going to have to take the weight we think as people. We, it's it's going to have to take that change in the way that we think as people is what I meant to say. Okay? That's what it's going to have to take. It's going to have to take us changing the way we think. And it's just that simple. And, 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 and like, I want to piggyback off of something someone else would say. Too, that um of course you know uh that of course um you know what i'm saying hey hold up for a second brother could you you can have the floor for a second because i have to do something real quick if you don't mind you can have the floor and once i'm done i get right back to speaking What happened? Brother, I had to do something real quick. Just just one more, just one second. Oh, okay. Keep 
justified or making excuses for the criminal behavior that's going on among us. And this is another reason why I say that if you justify this, or if, even if you sit back, and even those of you that are considered as the good people among us in our community sit back and allow this to continue without standing up, then you're just as guilty as the crime perpetrators. You know what I'm saying? And also, I remember years ago, uh, it was a brother who works in a, a drug counseling profession. And uh, he made it clear, this is years ago in my hometown in Detroit, Michigan. He made it clear years ago that if we don't get out there, and start chasing these drug dealers out of our communities. You know, where it'll be safe for our kids to go out in the front and play in the grass instead of these drug dealers having these uh, drug addicts crossing or coming over in the grass just to get to their porch or so they can purchase their drugs from them or whatever. You see what I'm saying? Even if that means some of us got to risk our lives, so be it, because ain't nobody else going to come and do it for us. We've seen that. Matter of fact, I was told by uh, a former uh, federal agent years ago that when crack first became devastating in this country, right in Detroit, they had a warehouse in the southern part of Detroit where they kept crack stored at. The federal, I'm talking about the feds actually had a building where they knew where crack was stored at, okay? They never did nothing about it, okay? It was a storage, it was a storage, uh, you know, warehouse. And crack was stored there. And they never did anything about it. Okay, so that just lets you know that they don't care nothing about us killing or destroying each other, okay? And, and, and this is the reason why we're going to keep on getting what we get in general as a people. This is what's going to keep justifying the mass incarceration of uh, black people in this country as well. Now, with that said again, uh, <laughs> and I'm, I'm just letting you know, these other crimes like killing, child molestation, that especially on the state level that they're light on. And me and someone else was talking about that earlier. How the state, when the feds give you more time for child sex crimes, the state gives you less time. So this is why you got more rapid child sex crimes going on because these same people go to prison and they get out before somebody who end up with a life sentence for a simple two crack cocaine rock possession. You see what I'm saying? Something similar that happened to a relative of mine years ago down south in Georgia. Okay? So I know that these people definitely deserve to be incarcerated. You know, as a matter of fact, uh, it was a couple of years ago here in a local prison here in Nebraska where I'm at where uh, they upstaged a riot it really wasn't a riot but it was like someone referred to as an uprising okay to uh, throw off the uh, prison guard administration and they ended up killing two child molesters in the process okay and that crime is not forgivable, especially among those even within the prison population. That's a crime that's not forgivable. Now, over the years and time, things have gotten light because the system, you know, people even in the system have gotten more weaker because they go for anything and it, or, or just fall for anything and don't stand for nothing, okay? But I remember... Um, at during my uh, periods of incarceration, those people was getting out early, you know, on parole. They 
rounds, putting them in programs that help expedited them to get in parole early out of prison. Then they go back out there and commit the same exact crime and make it harder for people that was in there for other ordinary crimes or less hideous crimes to get out of prison earlier because of them going in and out of prison committing crimes and then they'll let them back out on the streets after they violate a parole or even call another case for committing the same crime. You see what I'm saying? So, you know, uh, I'm, I'm like, you know, I don't, and, and that, that you, you know, when you molest a child, it's bad enough when you rape somebody, period, whether they grown or whether they're uh, an underage person. But especially when they're underage, you you not have you have not only robbed them of their virginity, but you robbed them of the right to live a normal life. Now they're destroyed mentally, they're destroyed physically, they're destroyed emotionally for the rest of their life. They have an emotional scar that they may have to go to uh, therapy for for the rest of their life or get some other type of professional help for for the rest of their life that just help them maintain any kind of sanity or get filled up with medication. Why do you think a lot of people are running around here filled up with all these medications and stuff? Because of stuff like that, because of people like that who's destroyed their lives, especially at an early age, and haven't really been held accountable for that. See, in Mississippi, in, in, a, in a situation as far as us controlling the state like Mississippi, people wouldn't get away with stuff like that or murder. Those crimes would be treated more seriously to the point where people would have to stay in prison. You know, and that's just that simple. We can't have no, we couldn't have nobody running rapid around our community like that in the situation of us controlling the state like Mississippi. We can't have that. We cannot have that. And it won't be tolerated once we could get this uh, Operation Exodus Mississippi campaign off the ground. That won't be uh, tolerated whatsoever. Even if, uh, and I know I may sound harsh when I say this, even if that means someone have to come up floating in a river somewhere, so be it. We can't have that. Not, not especially when it come to kids. We can't have stuff like that. And so, you know, this is why I say again, just like I even heard a rapper from uh, the old school hip-hop group called Wu-Tang Clan, Method Man saying on a uh, podcast on the Breakfast uh, Show that there are some people that deserve to be incarcerated. Simple as that. It ain't no other way around it. <laughs> you know? And, and uh, they need to be incarcerated. And you know what? Hey, I'm telling you if I see somebody, because see, I'm not a criminal, okay? So people, you know, as far as me being labeled a snitch, <laughs> go ahead. But that don't apply to me. That apply to somebody that's out there in the streets committing crimes. And see, that's what this generation today got mixed up. This is why a lot of people getting hurt and killed on the streets these days, too. Because they label the wrong people as snitches and don't rate a proper type of people that could be considered as a snitch. You see what I'm saying? And so they get that 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 uh snitch cold thing twisted. You know, and even uh this guy named Guy Fisher who was an associate of former heroin kingpin Nicky Barnes in Harlem, New York, back in the 70s, uh, who's doing life because Nicky Barnes snitched on him and, as well as others, said this in a, a magazine interview, that the only way you could call somebody a, a snitch is that they got to be committing a crime, okay? 
like you are, or out there caught up in the uh, lifestyle of crime like you are. And then when he pressure get too rough for him, you see what I'm saying? Then they want to turn around and squeal on other criminals. That's a snitch. You see what I'm saying? That is a snitch. But people like me, Brother Angel Snuff Snuff Seven, Sister Noble, you know, everyday law-abiding citizens in society, you see what I'm saying? You know, uh, 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 that don't apply to us. But if we do call the police, like even that brother Guy Fisher I mentioned said, it would be our right to call the police, especially if it's our last recourse. You see what I'm saying? So, you know, it's a difference. With, and, and, and that's called telling. When just a regular law-abiding member of the community call the police. But when a criminal is snitching, that's snitching. <laughs> you know? Mm -hmm. and, and you get people and you get people who get that twisted. That's what's wrong with this generation today. They get that twisted. You see what I'm saying? And then when you're putting all your business out here in the streets, while you all over the place when you're committing crime, and you think ain't nobody supposed to tell on you, you a goddamn fool. When you displaying your business, got your business displayed, you see what I'm saying? Everywhere you look up, people know what you're doing. Of course somebody going to call. You see what I'm saying? But that ain't necessarily them being a snitch. Because if the real snitch don't call the police on you, they will. You see what I'm saying? So either way, you locked in the corner. On that, on that part, you see what I'm saying? So, you know, but this is what I'm saying. The younger generation got this so twisted, is why it's a lot of violence going on in our community. You see what I'm saying? Because of that. And it, then it comes to the point where not only individuals get hurt or killed, families get involved and become victims because of stuff like that. You see what I'm saying? So, you know, what you're dealing with is a very bad situation. And, uh, you know, I'm going to be honest with you. If I could prove it, I would, if I could definitely prove it verbatim and point and, and, and put my, and put my finger on certain things, I would call out for some other people to be arrested for the crimes that's committed every day in the black community. And I'm dead serious. And I don't give a damn who it is. I don't give a damn if it's your religious email, your religious pastor, preacher, minister, or whatever. You see what I'm saying? Or even your uh, other type of leaders that, that come in the so-called name of pro-black consciousness or whatever. <laughs> you know? That's why, you know, I was kind of uh, baffled because I was still under the influence of the teachings of the wacky teachings of Malachi Z. York. <laughs> but when I realized that he, he, he's where he, he, he should be where he is, when I finally realized that, I was very relieved. Or as you could use another term, uh, elated. You see what I'm saying? I was very elated to, hit, to, to just know that. I was very elated just to know that they lock people up like Yahweh being Yahweh. You see what I'm saying? I was very elated to know that uh, they have that, that 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 the feds is actually pursuing that other nation of Islam leader leader uh, named Solomon, hmm. who went who who's a, a self styled uh, a law. God or whatever. You see what I'm saying? And went by the 
now his name, his real name is uh, Leroy Jenkins. Mm -hmm. Okay. And he used to drive trucks, Muhammad speaks trucks for the nation back in the uh, 60s. You see what I'm saying? And then eventually after the nation split up into different factions, he went to form his own faction called the United Nation of Islam, which is now called something else. It's called the Bayou Creators. And that was another organization when it was known as the United Nation of Islam that I was actually trying to process into as a member. And which I'm finally glad that I actually didn't become an official member of. Especially the way that they was handling people. You know what I'm saying? You know? All they ate is one damn meal a day and it was solid. And <laughs> toast. And that was it. Not even the stuff that they were selling out they uh, so-called uh, your restaurant that they had. They don't call the salon restaurant like Faircon them do. They call it your restaurant. Mm -hmm. But you can't even get a decent free meal but you got people working. Slaving. You know what I'm saying? Working on renovating the park, or old apartment buildings and properties and stuff that that Negro had in Kansas City, Kansas. Now, now, now that it had been brought to light that he was working people like Hebrew slaves and his one sister, one, one of the many within the many that finally sued his butt. You understand now the fans is pursuing him because he's not willing to pay that tab he, mm -hmm. that the court ordered him to pay her. So now he on the run and far as I know, he done left the country also from what I heard. Hmm. So, you know, he, I guess he better not never come back to the United States long as he on the run. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, you know, yeah, this is the type of stuff I'm talking about, you know? So, uh, I mean, we really need to be aware of these things that we're dealing with in our community. We have, we have, we have, we have criminals on all different levels, not just the, the petty street level, corner criminals, but we have all kind of type of criminals from among us that we even look up to for leadership. And that's strongly misleading and misguiding us. When you wonder why we can't get nowhere as people, it's because there's definitely people like that. You see what I'm saying? So, you know, um, I mean, and, and I'm going to tell you something. I know these walls is kind of thin or whatever. People might be hearing what I'm saying. But I don't even give a damn about that either. Because if something happened to me after this uh, video podcast, y'all know the reason why. Because of the truth I'm speaking on this uh, live podcast, which I just want y'all to know. I repeat it again. If something happens to me, y'all know why. You see what I'm saying? Because I'm sick and tired of this. You know what I'm saying? We already in a, uh, you know, in, in a very uh, perpetual, destructive uh, condition as a people, which we're facing domination. If we don't, you know, rise up out of this stupidity that we are on as a people, you see what I'm saying? So, you know, I could tell less what people say or think, you know, and that's real because we got a bunch of criminals and they more worse of an enemy than our Caucasian, fellow Caucasian uh, external enemies are. You see what I'm saying? They more worse than them. When, 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 when they ain't treated no different than us, well, especially when it comes down to us being looked upon as the N-word, we all included in that bunch. And we and, and some of us know this, like your so-called pro-black religious leaders I just mentioned, but don't give a damn. And never gave a damn. They know more about our people's uh, unfortunate slave-like condition that we've been through over 400 years in this country. And it's worse because they know 
as far as I'm concerned. That's why our uh, elder brother who be on our platform sometime, Omar Shamsuddin, said it need to be a bunch of us standing at their doors, waiting on them to open their doors so we can just put a sheet over them and beat the hell out of them. Every last one of them. I don't care if it's Louis Farrakhan. I don't care if it's El Shopkin. You know what I'm saying? Or whoever. They need to be held accountable for what they doing. That's even Jesse Jackson. Because he really even wasn't real from the beginning when he was around Martin Luther King during the lifetime of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. That's why Martin Luther King Jr.'s family don't have nothing to do with him. Especially dealing with the uh, allegations that he may have possibly had something to do with the assassination of Martin Luther King Jr. Because it just wasn't only blacks that killed Malcolm X. It's, it's also heavily being speculated and documented that blacks play, played a direct part in Martin Luther King Jr.'s assassination. Just like it was blacks who assassinated Noble Drew Ali. Hmm. You see what I'm saying? Within, from within his own organization mm -hmm. called the Moore Science Temple of America. Okay? So we can't get that twisted. You, you know? So, you know, yeah, it is what it is. It is what it is. It definitely is what it is. And this is why, like I told you today, well, I've been telling you before off and on, and even this recently, that I'm at the point, even though I care to want to see our people liberated from an oppressor, you know, like so many of us do, that are like-minded like me and brother Angel Snup Snup Seven and Sister Noble and Omar Samsudin, you know what I'm saying? But at the same time, I don't even get into reading the news too much like I used to when it comes to hearing about blacks getting shot down in the street by police. I don't, I don't really, it don't concern me as much. That's become a normal thing, as some would say. That's, that's a normal thing. Oh, another nigga dead, you know, at the, at the trick of a, a hap, trick of happy racist cop or whatever. You know, well, so what? And the reason I also say that because a lot of us put ourselves in that situation. Like I was saying earlier, when this podcast started, you know, a lot of us put ourselves in that situation. And what, and what really, what really baffles me is, hold up for a second, Val. Yeah, I just had to take a quick sip of this tea. But like I was saying, you know, um, what baffles me is this about the whole situation is that you know when you really look at things for what it really is you know it, it, it really truly baffles me to know that our people like when their sons get killed or their daughters get killed the first thing they say is well, my daughter was a good person. Or my son was a good person. He would never do nothing to nobody. Okay? You know what? Let me tell you something. I have relatives in my family, younger relatives in my family especially, that if they was to die at the hands of the police and I was to be interviewed and they asked me, what did I feel about that relative? I'll be straight up and truthful about it. Yeah, that's my relative or whatever. Yada yada. But you know what? They weren't no angel either. And that's what a lot of them mothers and fathers refuse to admit to. You see what I'm saying? Very rarely will I hear a mother say, well, my son was a thug ass nigga. Okay? I'm going to keep it straight up with you. Yeah, he might have not have deserved to got what he got by that police, but he was a thug-ass nigga. So he lived that type of lifestyle that that that, that brought that type of uh, 
you know, uh, problem to him <laughs> that ended his life. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So, <clears throat> you know, we can't get this situation twisted, you know? And, and, and uh, I'm not going to get it twisted. And I'm not going to, uh, you know, sit up here and defend such a uh, rhetoric. You know, because some of our people put themselves in that situation. Simple as that. Whether they want to accept it or not. You already know these racists want to kill you anyway. So why is you expediting it like a dumb jackass? Mm. <laughs> why is you expediting it? You see? So that's your fault anyway. You know? You, you, you know what I'm saying? And this is this is this is the crazy thing about it. You know, this is the reason why I don't care too much no more when I hear black people being shot down at the hands of a, a racist cop or a racist period. We put ourselves like you get a lot of these brothers who come here to where I'm at in the state I'm living at and it's where it's more populated with Caucasians and you pumping babies into these Caucasian women and you know what type of trouble that's going to bring so you abandon your responsibility as a potential father and move to another city and pump more babies into another woman you see what I'm saying and then when the law catch up with you because the child support or whatever oh the white man did the white man ain't did a goddamn thing to you you did it to yourself negro you know what I'm saying don't nobody want to hear that see okay and you listening to a brother you know what I'm saying that was once you know what I'm saying uh, who was once a product and a statistic <laughs> When it comes to the criminal element of things, when it comes to being caught up in and out the system and stuff and stuff like that, you know. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, you know, I'm not finna sit up here and defend none of that because I know how, as someone would say, and I don't want to use this word too much, but I'm gonna just say it this one time. That's why. We get treated as the niggas that we are by the racists and everybody else that don't have no respect for us because we don't have no respect for ourselves, whether it's as individuals or as a group of people. You see what I'm saying? We don't have no respect for ourselves. This is why people can move in and handle us any kind of way they want to and be justified by it and even be justified by the law. And doing it. You see what I'm saying? Because they don't, you, 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 you know, they don't, you, you know, no one, you giving people no reason to even defend us, even when we're systematically victimized, or however you want to put that. You see what I'm saying? You giving people more and more reason not to want to defend us. That's why you don't see Africans, Hispanics or too many Asians even, out there in the streets with us talking about Black Lives Matter because they know we don't take that serious. And those of us who be out there in the streets on that note ain't really serious about it and, and be out there in the streets for their own individual uh, agenda purposes. Like I've saw since I've been here where I'm still at now. You see what I'm saying? When it comes to those Black Lives Matter protesters and all that other crap, you know? So, uh, like I said before, you know, uh, at, the, at the end of the day, you know, we are, you know what I'm saying? Uh, you, you, you know, we are actually in a situation, you know what I'm saying? where people don't feel like they got to respect us or even care about our well-being as a human being or even looking at our existence as 
being any worth when it comes to being a human being, okay? Because we put ourselves in that situation. Like JC would once say, you know, I got 99 problems, but a B ain't one of them, okay? And what I'm saying is that most of the stuff that happened to us as black people in America is because 99% of the time it's our fault. This is not 1865 no more. This is not 1965 no more. This is 2021. We ain't got no damn excuse. Okay? And with that said, uh, I would like to yield the mic, hopefully, that the brother may want to speak. Because I don't want to tongue-tie myself. And if it's and if he doesn't want to speak, we can end this live earlier. Mm-hmm. Because I didn't intend on intend on being on here this long anyway. So, brother, do you have anything to say? Do you want me just to carry us on out? I'll go ahead and chime in real quick. Okay. I um want to first say that. Uh, you did a very, very good job of expressing yourself tonight on this subject matter. And uh, it was really an interesting talk. And there's really not too much I have to say. You covered so much of you know all the bases, really, in reference to the world that we live in. As many of you know, I myself have experienced incarceration. Ten years worth of it. I cannot come before you and say that many of those I was locked up with did not deserve that punishment. There was a young man who could not get along with his father. In fact, he was a Hebrew Israelite. Peace, uh, Sister Karen. And he was locked up with me because he took a machete and chopped his father's head off. That's why he was there and pleaded insanity. There was, of course, child molesters. There was this cracker boy. He molested his niece. And his family so sick that they brought the niece that he molested to the crazy house to visit him. I I, that that was a I, I didn't understand that one. And you ought to saw that poor young girl. She was scared out of her mind. There's a reason why he's in the crazy house. And you bring the, I never, I never even, I never, never even thought they would even do anything like that. Bring a victim to, to the molester. She was scared out of her mind. There was a, Murderers, rapists, you name it, I was locked up with them and many of them deserve what they got. However, being locked up with them 24 hours a day and living with people who have done so these these heinous acts and you talk to them you see their humanity. And some sometimes that's how some people get fooled by these persons because you talk to them and you ignore their crime and you begin to know them as a human being. And you should... Uh, It's really sad because there's nobody that
that I know of as a child. That I was a child at one time. All of us, all of us was children at one time. I've never heard a child growing up. You know, when I grow up, I want to molest a child when I get older. I never heard. I never heard somebody say, I want to sell drugs. I never heard no nobody say, you know, I think I want to chop my daddy's head off when I get older. I never, I never heard. I never heard. I'm on. You know, just as we playing, now as playing, you heard children talk about, I want to, you know, we playing cops and robbers, I'm going to rob a bank. But that's that's just playing a game. I never heard nobody serious. I never heard a sister. I never heard a sister. I want to be a prostitute when I grow up. I want to be a stripper and show my backside. And I never heard these different things. So what you just heard from Talib, is our consequences of our actions in this in this environment. The environment that we live in creates these situations. Because this environment that we live in is sick. It's a cesspool. It does not demonstrate freedom, justice, and equality. These, this is the core of living as civil people. When you deny people freedom, justice, and equality, then you get this cesspool that we find ourselves in. And some of us, we can, we can be goody two-shoes. I get up and go to work and work my job and have a family and the picket fence and, and the dog and all like that. But many are going to fall in the cracks too. Alcohol, drug addiction, just material greed, selfishness, arrogance. What they said, the, 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 the seven deadly sins. That's what happens in this society. And unfortunately, I cannot tell you or tell us in our current condition that we find ourselves on, uh, living in, I can't tell you that some people must be incarcerated. In fact, I would even go so far to say that some have actually deserved the death penalty. I cannot say that. I cannot say they don't deserve it. However, this is what the society breeds. That's what this society breeds. So Talib, I don't need to go behind Talib and repeat what he's already said because that's what the society breeds. But I can say this is what the Mississippi campaign is about. This is the catalyst, the catalyst to change things and turn this around, not only for soul brothers and sisters, but actually for the whole wide world of humanity. We cannot continue to live this way, live like this. We must transform. We must change. It doesn't make any sense to uh, create something in Mississippi and we're going to keep the same mindset that we have now. We might as well just keep doing what we're doing. And I'm glad that they are not latching on to the Mississippi campaign because many of these people going to carry the same mindset they have now to a new place. They're carrying dirty mud from one place to another. So what's the sense of cleaning a place up just so somebody can bring in nasty shoes? So I'm glad they don't mess with it. You need to stay where the hell you at. You nasty and dirty and filthy and this is where you belong. You belong with the racist cop that's going to blow your brains out. The one who discriminate against you. The one uh, 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 that abort your, happy to abort your babies. Absolutely. Deacon said they would destroy his purpose. Absolutely. So, you know, it's better not for us to attempt something like that if you're going to go into it with the same state of mind that you have now. 
because I can envision Mississippi. We might have a few people incarcerated, but that's not. We're looking to try to rehab them. We don't want them laying up, wasting taxpayer money. No, we want to rehab you so that you can come back into society according to what you've done. We don't want to be filling the jails up, whether it's state prison or whether it's in, in local local uh, facilities. We don't want our people locked up, but the only way that can change that, we have to change the environment. We have to change, transform the people into a new people, a different thinking people. The environment is creating all this. Whether we know it or not, it's the environment that we're in that's creating these situations. Prison with all these people in prison, that's nothing but exploitation. It's this nation, it's this government just exploiting the people for money. We know this. It's not about crime and punishment. It's about making money. A vast majority of the people in prison and a lot of these jails don't even, don't even need to be there. Let them sit there for a little while. Let them out. No, we're going to hold you and make these brutal laws. And we know the majority of them are going to be affected by the people we hate, which are so brothers and sisters. And we can hate them and we can make money off of them. It's all exploitation. It's not about crime and punishment. Going back again to what I was telling you about when you deny human beings freedom, justice, and equality, this is... So I don't understand why they can't get aboard the soul train and won't different. Oh, yeah, they won't different, but it's according to their religion. I want you to be like Jesus. I want you to uh, think... I don't want you to be a pan-African. I want you to... All this divisionary stuff. You don't want people just to live their life. You can be righteous and you don't have to have all these labels. You can create an environment of righteousness and don't have to put a label on it. These labels create division, which deny people freedom, justice, and equality. And as long as the human being is denied freedom, justice, and equality, I don't care where you go on this earth, you're going to have these problems. So that's why we need a Mississippi campaign. We need it, boss, at the same time, doesn't necessarily mean we're going to get it because, it, again, if you're going to keep the same attitude, the same mindset as you have right now, this is the best place to be. You filthy and you dirty and you nasty. So why you need to stay right here where you are and be happy. And this is just the way it is. It's time for a new change. A new heaven and a new earth. That's what the God promised. But guess who that God is? That God is us. We have the power to create a new heaven and a new earth. It's us. It says in your scriptures that ye are gods. It's us. It says the kingdom of heaven is in you. It's us. What you waiting on? It's you. It's me. It says in your scripture we are the children of God. So that means we are God. We were made in the image of God. We're gods. And, you, and we can't get the state of Mississippi. We can't change this little condition. What kind of God are you? The God of poverty? The God of violence and confusion? The God of immaturity? The God of silliness? Maybe that's the kind of gods we are. Because that's what we're creating. And that's who we are. So, I will tell you about the Mississippi campaign, but I'm not going to beg nobody. That's your business. Be God of losers. Because it seems like they love to lose and love and childish. They want somebody to feel sorry for them. Oh, woe is me. Uh, you know, things are so bad. And complain. The white man do this. And, and I didn't get my stimulus check. And, uh, and the list goes on and on. You God, you have the power to change these things. 
You don't have to wait on Yah. You don't have to wait on Muhammad or a spaceship or nothing. The power is in your hand. It was a man that put us in this condition. It's men that can get us out. It's simple as that. Men and women, knowing that you got to change yourself. Sister Karen said people have no self-accountability. Exactly. You don't want to put no responsibility on yourself. Well, in this situation, if you don't, you're done. It's as simple as that. Change or die. That's the only choices we got. Let the former things pass away. They're doing you no good. We have to be like the caterpillar changing from a caterpillar to a butterfly. You will never know that the butterfly was a caterpillar. It looked like two different creatures. We got to go from being a, a Negro to what they say in religion, from a Negro to God. And when people look at us, yeah, a new, we have to become a new people. So when people look at us, they'll never even know. Y'all came from them? Them old buck shuffling, nigg, hog, mog eating, uh, 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 crack smoking. That's where y'all come from. Well, on that note, we're going to be out of here. I got 5% left on my phone. I want to thank Brother Talib for his uh, the deacons for joining us tonight. We did pretty well tonight. I'm going to shop. That's really good. And uh, we're going to catch you on the flip-flop. The next scheduled live stream is Thursday at 8 o'clock p.m. Central. We're going to talk about uh, this situation about anti-Asian violence. <laughs> we want to talk about that a little bit. So on that note, um, unless Sister Karen wants you know, Wednesday or Tuesday or whatever, we, we can do that too. Late night. With Soul Sister Karen, let's support her on her uh, live streams. Support Brother Talib, Soul Sister Noble. Shout out to Brother Omar and all those in Reality's Temple uh, land. Uh, I put out a, a brand new Sniffy uh, adventure. I put the I put the link in the uh, chat room if you want to check that out. If, if you don't want to wait till April the twentieth. <laughs> You can check that out now. And uh, until next time, y'all, as Don Cornelius always used to tell us in part, and I wish us love, peace, and so we all did 5,000. And wh where's that music? And I can play that music to this, to this what you call it, come on, to uh, all the, all my telephone crap go out. There we go.